Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. I have with me a very special guest, an expert in uh, health, uh, dieting, and sports. Uh, someone who goes by na the name of Sarah Elise. How are you, Sarah? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me yeah, on, guys. It's lovely talking with you. And can you tell me, before we start talking about the subject itself, talking about what you do, actually, <laughs> or intro introducing yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm Sarah Elise Rosner. I am a stress management and fitness coach based out of Chicago. And I basically help high achievers and um, people that work the nine to five shifts reduce stress and find success in their health goals and their um, career goals, and just overall mindfulness, putting a different spin to dieting. Yeah, uh, as you can see, I'm obviously chiseled like a Greek god. So <laughs> what, what, can, what can you add to someone who has already uh, uh, achieved the, or peaked the Mount Olympus of uh, training and exercise? <laughs> well, I have I have two different two different tracks. So uh, the first one is working with people that hey, you know, it's it can be overwhelming. We have so much going on in our daily lives. You're doing this podcast, and and there's not enough time in the day. So I start with people. Let's let's start with 15 minutes a day doing something that completely brings you joy. So it could be as simple as I'm going to go out on a walk with my dog. Or it could be as complicated as I'm going to take 15 minutes to create a meal for myself. And uh, we start there and then progress to maybe two times a week we do those 15 minutes. Or then we're going to expand it into 45-minute workout. So there's so many things to do. And yes. then the other track I have is I have some um, athletes that I work with. And we focus on how to condition our bodies in a functional way. Um, and because a lot of time they're putting a lot of pressure on their muscles and joints, and we need a different kind of program for that as well. Yeah, so what do you say to someone who says, I can't bring myself to walk or I don't have time or I have other obligations or I don't have the mental capacity to do these kinds of things? So how do you try to, if, you, if there is some kind of uh, regimen that you prescribe to your, to your clients or people you work with, so what do you do when someone says something like this? <laughs> well, I, I talk to them about let's um, break up your day. Let's actually put everything you do in a calendar. And if it's meetings, like what are the spaces in between? I was like, do you have a moment to just breathe? Mm -hmm. And usually they say, what? <laughs> and I say, yeah, if you, if you can just breathe, like take three deep breaths, you just found time for yourself. So that's my first little trick. And then we move on from there. And normally they're like, okay, I can't find some time for myself throughout the day. Yeah, so are there different routines you give to different people or there is something that is like, uh, I don't want to say like uh, a universal uh, pill that you can give to someone, to everyone, but is there some method that you find is more, um, is more conducive to losing weight and, and uh, keeping on that track than others? I will. I think the most important thing for a lot of people is making habitual changes. So um, let's say you're a big coffee person and you put cream and sugar in your coffee. I'm like, can we take the sugar out? So that's that's the quick little fix. And then um, for workouts, it's going to be a completely different type of regimen depending on what you already do. Like if you are a walker, Maybe I would put in some strength training in there. And the strength training is the best way to start to see the pounds shed off. People always think it's just cardio work. Cardio is important, but we also need to build the strength of our muscles and bones. So uh, it's important. It's actually imperative for us to start 
getting that work accomplished. Um, and then again, with food too, another thing that I do is look into what they're already eating. If, if someone has, let's say, a lot of carbohydrates and they're not having um, enough and when I mean carbohydrates, there's all different types, so I don't want to yeah, get into that. Yeah. I, I know the them simple, well, yeah. I know them well. <laughs> don't have yeah, to tell Yeah, the simple me. sugar ones. They're the, with the me. They're with me at all times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, bagels and things. Like, I love them to pieces, but can I have them every day? No, especially if you have stomach issues. Um, that's how I discovered it. I had a lot of, a lot of gut issues, and then I was like, okay, well, there's all this simple sugars in in the bagel I'm consuming. So maybe I need to go the veggie route. And so we start to implement veggies in a fun way with our carbs. And then when we feel we can handle it, we'll take some of the carbs out that um, have been irritating our gut. Yeah, so what do you do with people who have different conditions that have real problems or strains on their body that they can't do? <coughs> Sorry that they can't uh, to stress their body too much yeah yeah so it, it really depends um so i've had people that have irritable bowel disease ibv and then ibs which is really common um especially i have a jewish background so it's very too, common yeah. In the, <laughs> yeah it's very common in our jewish culture yes. of ibs irritable bowel syndrome and you know, uh, I, I look at, I have a gut health e-workbook that I, I basically take in. Um, all your listeners can get it. I'll send that to you. And basically, it's breaking down what's going on on a week-to-week -week basis in your body. If we're noticing anything that irritates it, what time of day do you start to feel hungry or hangry? <laughs> and then yes. we break it down from there yes. and see, hey. What's what's up? What what do we what are we really wanting in that moment? So, is it the bagel or is it something more? <laughs> yes, yes. Is it the knedel? Yeah. Yes. Is it the matzo balls? Yes. <laughs> is it the matzo yeah. balls? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can be a vegan and be Jewish and fat at the same time. <laughs> a lot of people. True. A lot of people. The vegans, especially, notice. Um, because they feel like they're not getting as no, enough nutrients, what they'll do is they'll put so much, uh, not cheese, sorry. They'll put so much um, like pasta and grains in their meals and they're just putting just too much in there. So it's it's finding the right portion for their body. Yes, yeah, so were you always a fit, if I may ask, or was there some kind of revelation that turned your life around from I don't know. I'm just interested. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I so I would say I was not a healthy kid necessarily. My parents did the American portions where they would um, there were two options. So it would be like we're doing some sort of food being brought into the house, <laughs> or <laughs> we're going to they're going to do the standard meal. So you'll have a a serving of protein, a serving of vegetables, a serving yes. of something you know and um i was doing musical theater a lot so it wasn't extremely um difficult for me but in college that's when i started to put on a little weight because you don't have your parents to be like here are your meals <laughs> you gotta figure this out your for yourself so even though i was in musical theater i had no idea what what or how to keep that body that is doing all the acting and the dancing and the singing, like how to really keep it um, in check. And I just kind of was a binge eater and became kind of an emotional eater because I was that person that was on burnout 24 seven um, in college. Then post-college, I was working at three different jobs to make ends meet so I could do my creative lifestyle. And it was a little insane for me, but um, when I was able to acknowledge it was in my late 20s and the emotional eating I realized was becoming a problem. So I went to the Integrative Institute of Nutrition and that's where I decided to get my own health coaching certification so I could understand nutrition 
and the concepts and how I could help other people because I know it's a problem um, for a lot of people. So how did you be begin your practice? How did you find the clientele? How did you find the, the right people? How did you know exactly what you wanted to do with it and not for people who don't need it or for people who, uh, I'm sorry to say, are just lost in their own uh, thoughts and cacophony, yeah. Well, something that I was noticing when I got my Pilates certification was that there were so many people that were not causing stress to themselves, but there was definitely this element of, I am overwhelmed, I am, I have all these meetings, then I'm going to these late night dinners, and I just noticed that these people were very much so high achievers, and they wanted to make, they were also people pleasers, so they wanted to make sure everything was just how it should be. I was like, okay, that perfectionism, we started to break it down in Pilates, and I was like, wow, I could have just applied this to my other point, my other part of my business, Live Well Enhance You, and that's kind of how all this began was I saw the need for it from my own clients and from myself I saw a lot of myself in them with this whole I need to make a change there's a lot of issues I'm not dealing with my stressors so that's how it all began. So are you learning more and more once you begin to see a lot of different people once you begin to see maybe to start to learn different kinds of methods and practices and I don't know, dietary supplements or, or stuff like this. Yeah, and what I've noticed, the healthiest kind of supplements have been vitamins. And I think going back to the basics has been where my clients thrive is no, knowing that that pill that's going to, going to magically shed the weight yes. is not going to work, but a vitamin D supplement is going to maybe help produce more enzymes in your body to actually thrive in your day-to-day -day life. Um, and maybe let's also see what kind of foods magically help the gut and provide that same nourishment than a pill would. So yeah, I've been um, taking action on doing research, talking. My my favorite thing to do is learn from physical therapists for my fitness practice, and then also learn from doctors, uh, specifically gut health and kidney doctors, um, what exactly needs to happen and where I should be avoiding, where I should be avoiding certain diets for individuals that don't have the same situations as other people. So that's what I, yeah. I strive to do. So what do you recommend someone who is a start, just starting? Not me. I'm a, already a chiseled Greek statue, but <laughs> someone, someone who is just an amateur, a beginner, what would you recommend if they don't want to go uh, with you uh, over the routine or work with you and they want to do it and to do it by themselves how would one go about it well i always say i might not be a match for you so i do give this um, <laughs> 30 minute plan and it's a balance your life plan to customize it to their needs so i'll be like okay what are three things that you can do now that are realistic <laughs> and then they'll have it and they'll do a follow-up and see, hey, did this did this work for you? But something that comes up a lot is sleep, that people don't know how to manage their sleep schedule. And usually it's because they're looking at their technology late at night. And yes. I call it the doom scroll. <laughs> so I'm like, stop doom scrolling. <laughs> That's not going to help. I'm like, even if you transfer just to watch TV for a good 10 minutes versus the Zoom scroll, fine. But I want us to get off of our necks looking down and us feeling all this strain in our necks. Um, then the other thing is if you can get the technology completely gone, to so maybe read a book or just focus on the breath that I told about earlier. 
Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about dietary uh, uh, plans, shall we say, mm -hmm. or eating schedules. So there are a lot of uh, different uh, kind of methods uh, popping up. Uh, I don't know, the, the cycle of not eating 18, 18 hours, 24 hours, I don't know. I don't know what works anymore. <laughs> I try to eat at all hours, no. <laughs> but, uh, so how would one uh, go about it to find the, the rhythm, shall we say, of his gut uh, bacteria? <laughs> yeah, so it, I guess too, it, it is different for everyone, but uh, what I have noticed and what I've talked to with doctors is the intermittent fasting seems to be really working for people because uh, the three meals a day, even though that is ideal, it doesn't work for everyone. So sometimes splitting those meals up in eight hours or you know, having like some people do small snacks through those eight hours, as long as we're not gorging our faces with like ice cream and stuff. And I, I love my Ben and Jerry's, so I, I get it, but it's They're very, good guys, they're good guys. They're good yeah. guys, the best guys. <laughs> yeah. My two favorite men, <laughs> they're mentions, exactly. So I really in, enjoy those things, but I also am like, okay, um, I don't believe in cheat days. I believe if, if you are feeling that you need this, chances are you're not going to want it later if you have, you know, a scoop full of your Ben and Jerry's. And it's important to start simple. So with, if you're like, okay, I'm going to eat in those eight hours. Well, what are some foods that you can, again, if you go through like a gut workbook and find out what are the things that are irritating you, what can you take out and what are the things that you enjoy that you could put in? You know, are you a kale person? If not, are you arugula? Like find what mixed green works for you. And then you could, again, add uh, maybe it's a whole grain bagel versus that simple carb sugar bagel. Yeah, I want to thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. So fun, so fun. Uh, and I hope we have some conversations uh, in this vein or some other topics relating to health, uh, sports, dieting, and all those things in the future. <laughs> Same here. It was so great talking to you and thank you again for having me on. <laughs> thank you so much, Sarah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>